Okay, we'll get started. This is, this, as I told the others, is going to be a closing of a chapter, end of a milestone for you guys as we, as you finally get a chance to breathe and relax and um, get your bearings again, figure out how you want to, in which direction you want to go for the rest of your uh, next step in the adventuring life. So, when we last left you, you had just pulled up to the town of Brooksway. It's a ruined old village, just foundation stones, a couple of walls and that. Set up a camp. Um, a few strange things happened. Gom, you noticed this thumb that you've been playing with turning into a necklace? You were turning it into a necklace? or is I that... was, and then I had a better idea for it. What would you like to do with it? <laughs> I want to keep it in my pocket for the moment, but mm -hmm. I want to find some sort of artificer to make it into a cat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, you're while you're contemplating this, this dead thumb, you notice that it does start to twitch and move mm. and um and almost like it's trying to crawl away. And that's when you It's like inchworming. Yeah. You make the leap that oh yes, the bone caller has been calling the dead and the black wing reavers in black mood that you left in this tomb are probably doing the shuffling zombie walk north to answer the call of the Bone Lord. I just love that you see a, you see a finger twitch, you're like, ah, yes, the Bone Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just join all the dots, it's yeah. incredible. Um, well, one thing I was going to do with all of my, how many, 38 orc hands, yeah. was to put them all on a big long string. <laughs> so I've sort of taken them out and they start to sort of, Crawl away. <laughs> That's right. Make a slayer. Walk hand on a leash. Yeah. yeah, but they're only going that way, so that's yeah. the way we want to go. It's going to be incredible when finally you do want to confront the bone lord. You're like, how yeah. do we find him? <laughs> just follow the orc hand. Yeah. So you got 38 orc hands. I think that was the number, yeah. Because you get four, only five gold in orc hand, but that's going to add up. Yeah, yeah. Mm. George had all the gold written down. Yeah. <laughs> Say what? George had all the gold written down. <clears throat> yeah. Um, well, you yeah. still got to get paid when you get back. Yeah. For you. And there's going to be um, a few things you can. So I don't know how much money you got on the trip. It was it was around four hundred. Yeah. 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 I think so. So we'll keep that in mind because there might be things you want to buy in Wildgate um, and things you want to do. <laughs> How much does reanimating a thumb cost? I don't know. Um, actually, it's a, it's a very good point. Um, yeah, so you spend the night in Brooksway. It's a, you set up your normal camp. The Yakworms are buried. Old Tim um, takes the first watch and says, we'll ride hard and get to Wildgate within two days at the most. Uh, we should be all right. We can handle everything that's been thrown at us out here, and it only gets easier on the way back. Sleep well, boys. I've got first watch. <laughs> and yeah, we'll just fast track as there's a montage of you guys riding the yak worms, loading up Arthur on with uh, Big O on the back. Trimlane's been riding. She talks to all of you to try and get as much information as she can. She wants you to describe what the frost giants looked like. Some of you recalled that one was wearing a cloak of chains, one was wearing a cloak of bones, and one was wearing a cloak just of shimmering ice. And she's writing all this down um, as part of her notes. Uh, yeah, you're surging along on these giant yak worms that are churning through the snow. You spend the night out in the wild with the yak worms surrounding you as you make a camp in the middle. Uh, another fire glowing. Uh, everything seems quite still, as though the land has fallen quiet. You, um, you're not quite sure why it could be something to do with the, these uh, undead walking the land and maybe the natural predators are lying low. Um, but by the end of the second day, you see the first tower of um, Wildgate in the distance. And as you approach, you can see that some of the structures structure has been damaged and fallen um, you get closer and you s can see the great bridge stretching across and that's been cracked down the middle and at least a hundred feet down the middle is just broken the bridge is standing as two long archways that never quite touch um, 
you can still see there's guards in this first tower as you approach. And as you approach, old Tim um, raises his hand and the guard raises his hand and comes out. And, and yeah, you all pull up and the guard looks at you all and says, ah, the, uh, the white slayers. Welcome back. We've heard all about what you've achieved. Uh, and he gives you all a grudging nod of respect. And he says, we're using our crocats to ferry people back and forth. And um, Gong, you know about crocats as one of the locals here at Wildgate. The Guild of Assassins uses them. They're like a griffin, but they've got the body of a, the front body of a crow the back body of a black panther, big huge creatures, quite exclusive, but um, it seems like the Assassin's Guild is helping out with this, with this town at the moment. Uh, and, and old Tim is a little perturbed with his yak worms, he's got to leave them on this side. And he says, well they're, they're well trained and we can always call them when we need them, they'll just stay around here. Don't like to leave them out here though. And, yeah, you can see all these guards as you, as the head guard says, wait on the bridge. And as you wait on the bridge, you can see these black dots appear on the horizon on the other side of Wildgate um, and fly down and land. And you all mount up, you take your possession. Some of the crow cats, their front legs are huge raven claws. They can they grab a lot of your possessions. What time of day is it? It's just coming up to evening. Okay. Would you say it's <laughs> dimly lit? Yeah. I, I will. I, yeah, will. I, I just and then also just like show away the the burdens. Yeah. Quite, sort of do anyone else want to? Would you say it was a hundred feet? <laughs> it's a bit too long for me to try and do anything. Um, yeah, and yeah, you have the ability to to mention door. Uh, if you don't know the spell, it lets oh. you go up to <clears> five hundred feet. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if it's something you're interested in doing, no, 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 no. Don't want to give it away. No, no, yeah, no. So I'm just yeah, circling. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's probably the first. You probably tested it a couple of times yeah. in the night, um, dispensing vigilante justice as you go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you've. It's this is the first time you've actually. Because the, the valley, the chasm below you, disappears into mist. It's mm -hmm. like a huge drop off. And as you leap off one end of the bridge and find yourself holding onto the cape and gliding over the top, you get this huge feeling of vertigo as the land falls away <laughs> before you. But you hold on tight, little sheer shake, but you pick it up quickly. And yeah, wind rushing through the cold night air, it's exhilarating as Wildgate starts to come on the other side and you can see a uh, few of the guards <laughs> on the other tower <laughs> trying to figure out what's coming towards them um, but also to warn of the, the crow cats coming across, there's uh, white flags being waved on the other tower so yeah, they, they watch you whereabouts are you going to land? Oh, I'll land where all the other things are Okay, yeah, they actually veer off and make their way to Gunther's castle. Yeah, I'm just And so, that. yeah, you, you form fo formation with them looking <laughs> alongside at Zeph while he's riding. <laughs> You're flying next to him. Uh, yeah, you can, as you go over the town of Wildgate, you can see the destruction is quite noticeable. There's a... I'll quickly draw Wildgate, just so all in your head you know where, how everything is. Come pictures. <laughs> yeah. So you guys have approached. Here is what's known as the Cold Catch Mountains. And the wildlands are all up here. You guys have been approaching from this side to avoid the massive undead army that's been... I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, you come here to where the first craggy tower made of lava stone scoria rock with all weird jutting angles is. And the bridge goes across what's known as the Sword Drag Valley. This valley just disappears into mist at the bottom. You can't see the bottom of it. This bridge is broken here where Nibbles took his flight. Other tower is here, similar, very similar to this tower. And then all Wildgate is, is a very long main street made out of a scoria black stone rock. And all the old town 
is around here, and that's all made out of this black stone rock. There's four castles here, mini castles, which signify the four houses of the major patrons. Gunther's, which you've been into, is this castle here. It's a big mountain here where the Assassin's Guild hangs out in a cave system. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> this here was the arena you fought in, where you made your name, basically. And there's a lot of, um, there's a housing district here of lots of uh, small stone houses, all in a grid-like pattern. Another housing district here. This here, along the valley, was where that overlook the pub was, was yeah. that looks over the valley. And then, as you guys fly down here, down here you can see there's almost a camp tent city where a lot of temporary merchants set up their wares to capture adventurers and everything. So, all down here are the white tops of tents and stuff. About here is where ground zero seems to be, where a lot of these buildings are just flattened and gone. Going over these first two castles, they're majorly damaged as well. You can see there's been breaches, uh, buildings have been torn down. The last two seem to be standing in an attack. Um, does there seem to be like, as we're flying over um, and looking at like kind of the boundary of where the castles are and, and the where the pit happens, yeah. does there seem to be like a lot of damage like as if things have clawed their way up or anything like that, or is it... Yeah, it's, it's hard to tell from this, this distance, yeah. but you do remember Trimlane and that. What used to happen in Wildgate is, as their burials and what have you, they used to just chuck people off into the, yeah. Yeah. the almost endless valley. <laughs> and what Trimlane said is, huge masses came crawling up the side, spilling onto the... Spilling over so they've been disposing what? bodies for hundreds of years, and yeah. then they swarmed the. So yeah, yeah so like it, like the wall, like it looks fine from where we can see, or there's is there large chunks taken out? Because I'm just wall for Gunther's, or just just like in general. Like, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you can totally see, and you also remember there was talk of this massive dragon that, that you yeah. guys saw coming down, and there is major ripping walls pulled down, especially on these two castles. These two appear unscathed, as though um, the, the brunt was born around this area, gotcha. and maybe Gunther was just lucky that he was more on the outskirts, um, and also that you warned him, so he had time to marshal his defences. Um, and being near the Assassin's Guild helps quite a bit too. Also, Zeph, you know that's approximately where Bone Boy's shack yeah, is gone. It's just flattened. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> yeah, um, and there were a few other shops and that around there. They look damaged, um, but yeah. Are they functional? Um, a lot of them seem to be. You can still see people milling around and uh, using them. Even from this view, though, it feels like the population's thinned a lot from what yours, because you know what the streets feel like around this time of day, mm -hmm. and it, it seems uh, approximately half. I just fall in for my beard growth. Sorry, I've got a note of that. So yeah, you had two days of rolling, yeah. right? So I grew a beard on the first night. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so what sort of beard does it look like? Are you going to try to do anything with it? I think he can only grow like a Van Dyke kind of thing. <laughs> but it's, quite, it's gotten quite long overnight. So uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So, so I can do this as a prop. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. When you're thinking, when you see new magic that but you're it's, considering. It's like... It's like it's like teenage beard, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like... It's a bit wispy. Yeah, it's a bit... It's full, but you know, it... Yeah. So does it just sort of grow instantly? It grows overnight while you're sleeping, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And you had changed into a beard at some point. I did, yes. Are yeah. you keeping that going? Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I wait until morning mm -hmm. until I change that. Yeah. And that's something I want to talk to you about as well, because Gong maybe has a regular look he has in Wildgate, and he might have other looks that are uh, for his more private person. Uh, I'm still in my prison look, so. Yeah, is that your normal Wildgate look? Like, maybe um, people who know you would recognise you in Wildgate? I, yeah, I don't change form mm -hmm. super often. It's only <clears> for, like, if I want to, like, spine or, cool. or anything. Cool, cool. 
So yeah, like for example, um, you and I'm Hugh Jackman. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that is totally right as well. So you yeah. notice a few ladies take a double take yes. as we fly <laughs> by. <laughs> so everyone looks he different today. except me. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm flying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, you're flying and you, you've got inner rage in your eyes. <laughs> um, yeah, so your, for example, your um, Patreon, was it Murlac? Sorry? Was it Murlac? Murlac, yeah. Murlac. He'd recognise you, right, if you walked in. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, just establishing how Gollum operates in a wild game. Yep. So that's cool. Um, yeah, and then you land in Gunther's courtyard, and there's that elf that you remember known as Luthius that's waiting for you. And um, very quickly, one, one of the crow cats was led by the assassin known as No Name, the lady with the mask that uh, talked to you about being a patron. Um, she discusses the bounty, and if you managed to retrieve the bodies or the <coughs> proof that they were killed. What, what did we take? We took the heads? You took the heads, yeah. yeah so we're just like, boom, out of the bag of holding. Uh, yeah. And, there we go. Okay, and yeah, <laughs> you notice that as you got into this range, you notice your thumbs stop moving and the heads and everything are quite still. So I was hoping to see the heads like, like <laughs> close <laughs> all their way with the I don't know, no job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it <laughs> seems like it, <clears throat> what's happened is Maybe the Bone Lord's reach doesn't reach this far anymore. Um, Some yeah. kind of barrier, maybe. Maybe a barrier. There's strong wizards here. Um, yeah, but she's... I'm sick of this undead shit. <laughs> yeah. That's right. The barriers came up anymore. afterwards. <laughs> but she says, ah, a job well done, gentlemen. Uh, how much was it for the heads? I think it was only a hundred, but you earn the... Uh, yes notice of the assassins and, and maybe some of their favour. Given given how Nibbles operates, what condition are the heads in? Well I'm not Nibbles, that's Nibbles. <laughs> and I, well Nibbles didn't chew on those ones. We we, yeah. we, we, we had everything in the bag of holding. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know, maybe that's like a pocket dimension, right? So it's yeah. like yeah, it's fine. Yeah. There's no We're, bugs or things yeah. in there. That They'll be oh, reserved. I'm not worried about. Well, I'm worried about the damage that never yeah. sort of I mean, you did, did decapitate one with paws. Yeah, I, mean, I remember. I mean, it's it? pretty standard at yeah. this point. I think <laughs> Nibbles has got the precision down. That's right. Yeah. You can get the neck and yeah. one clean sort. Yeah. Yeah. No, she uh, she takes them all in. Uh, says this will be enough for the contract, and yeah, she. Tosses old Tim, no, she tosses Lufus a pouch of coin, and he catches it and says, uh, "And any other bounties or anything you've collected, leave with me, and I will gather the coin." I'll um, pull out the orc hands like a like a, a clown <laughs> scarf. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, all strung together. Yeah, there's a, there's a guy that comes up with a car, a hand cart. <laughs> Loads it up. You picked up some snow troll parts and stuff as well, yep. didn't you? Yeah, no, we, can, we can take them out as well. Yeah, so we can. Uh, Luthus will say, I will uh, tally these up and I will get the coin for you. Um, we also. You have successfully completed your contract, but come. Uh, Gunther awaits. Gunther awaits and we will uh, finalise the contract there. And he leads you into uh, Gunther's castle in a sanctum go through even though the outside is quite grim dark you know this tough <clears throat> scoria stone everything seems made out of that the whole of wild gate it's by this frozen land um it's always feels grim and dark but there's the people bring it color the adventurers with their cloaks and the uh, flags that they put out on their um, stores or fly from the arenas and once you're in gunther who is quite flamboyant a uh famous ex-adventurer his interior is his decor is showing his, his success basically <laughs> and there's lots of pictures of his exploits and as you move through the corridors you, you get a feel for the guys as if you know of Gunther the same way you know of Percival Bartleby there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a range of old famous adventurers who yeah. have done great things you believe it all, mm -hmm. uh, could be exaggerated, Gom, you know as well. Um, you know him on a more professional level as a potential patron um, that you've never dealt with, 
But um, Murek, was it Murek? Mm. Yeah, Murek deals with him a lot. He thinks he's a Gump is a bit of a hot air blowhard, but he's he gets the job done. He's been very successful at uh, managing adventurers, claiming um, claims stuff like this tomb from his information that he gathers, um, growing his name. Uh, can I see if anything's like magical? Um, there isn't anything here, and as you move through these corridors. Um, you do know that Gunther is well known to have a bunker under his castle that you guys had actually visited. That is very well guarded by constructs and uh, the like. And also, um, no one tries to rob people in Wildgate because that means the assassin okay. I didn't realise yeah. it was that transparent. <laughs> <laughs> involved. Just, I was about to say, please, like, this guy has to pay us first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, so, have a, I have a question about the bridge that's ten, no, this is just off the yeah. ten tool. Um, how it, the bridge is destroyed? Uh, the, the middle section of it is two great archways, sort of supported archways, uh -huh. that on either side um, they're still fine, but the hundred feet or so in the middle, it's like a one kilometre bridge. Oh, um, okay. So Huge something's bridge. happened. Talking to, say, let's say you ask Luthus about it as you're going. He said, yeah, on the way through the dragon, just his tail just took out that middle mm -hmm. section. And then he fell upon the um, two castles of the other two major patrons. And uh, we're down to two major patrons, <laughs> let's just say. Um, we lost about half our patrons in the night of the dead, is what he calls it now. Yeah, and then he leads you into this this room, um, and sitting there is Gunther, with a, a glass of wine in his hand, and sitting next to him is Corks. <laughs> corks. You don't know Corks. Hey, Corks, you're alive. <laughs> this is extremely funny because I was going to pitch something to Gunther. <laughs> Yeah, and Gunther and Corks have been chat uh, chatting away happily, yeah. like old friends almost. And um, you get the feeling that they're outdoing each other with their stories, and they're laughing, and <laughs> and yeah, seems they seem really comfortable with each other. And as they turn, yeah, you say Corks, and he says, "Lads, lads," and he gets up and he gives you a hug and gives Nibbles an especially vigorous hug and then checks to make sure you've still got your corks and then he stops it I don't know who you two are <laughs> but uh, my name's Corks do you know why they call me Corks <laughs> do I want to <laughs> you probably do lad it's because I collect corks that's my whole thing he's a little gnome quite muscly tattoos all over him of various corks he's got a necklace with lots of different corks all over them Okay. Seems his whole identity. <laughs> and uh, he says, Oh, it's so good to see you lads. I made a fortune on you. I made an absolute fortune. Um, come, come, sit down. Wine, wine, everyone. And he seems to be uh, just as comfortable giving orders here as Gunther is. And Gunther's like, Oh, yes, yes, wine, wine. And uh, you notice with your perception that Gunther is swearing a couple of courts. <laughs> <laughs> around his neck awesome yeah and and uh cork says oh it's... sit down sit down and wine's poured servants come around uh he introduces himself to both of you he says hello i'm corks do you know why they call me corks no. okay. it's because i collect corks i'm one of the world's most renowned cork collectors and uh i've got gumper here and on it too he's been bitten by the cork bug uh so yeah, we've got so they collect corks. Corks of power, like yeah. magic corks. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this is something that could actually interest you. Um, in that he'll quickly give you a rundown, as you say, to just corks. He says, No, no, <laughs> not just corks. Corks of power used to trap powerful spirits. Um, and, and they can be used for other things as well, like this cork here. The slippery peep, it can make me move through difficult territory without being stopped. And what's a couple of the other ones? You've got, oh, I've got them run down. <laughs> you got the spell story one. Um, yeah, so there's a 
there's the spell storing one, yeah. um, which it's got. Yeah. Then we've, there's the the one where you can put it in anything and it like makes the liquid nice and clean. Give me a second. I'll, I'll, yeah. I've got them right And there's now. some quite powerful ones, quite rare ones. And uh, if, if they're used to track powerful spirits, where are the spirits now? Well, <laughs> let's not get into that. <laughs> has, has Nibbles put two and two together? About... Yeah, I think I think he has. <laughs> okay. um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll just run over the corks of power. Yeah. We've got this scintillating, uh, the scintillating sniffer, which enhances properties. That's, that's mm-hmm. it. We've got the blue moochie dooch, which is the rarest and most powerful cork of them all. Um, we've got the tabernacle choir, which is a basically spell storing. Yeah. Um, the tempting Toledo, which is uh, a healing cork. Um, there's the hot potato, the break bone blocker, and the Bob and Betty, which we don't know about yet. There's the Soul Catcher, which is it traps, traps souls. Slippery Pete, which is free action. The Lucky Long Lid and the Murder Curdler. Yeah. Yeah. And so he says, well, that's a great question. The problem is that, well, there's a, there's a game, and you'll know about this game. It's called Wisp, where spirits are infused into small fighting totems they can be constructs they can be things made out of bone and wood and they're almost pitted like a underground dog fighting ring where the totems fight and so the more powerful spirits you have the better your totem is at fighting um he says but the problem is the bone lord he wiped out well, there's a lot of confusion. Either he killed Bone Boy or Bone Boy is the Bone Lord. You know Bone Boy is a lesser patron who deals in capturing minor feral spirits that um, sort of wander the land and he sells them to young budgeting wisp players. Um, and, and this is starting to catch your attention because it's one of your interests. If you remember, um, you dealt with a gnome called yep. Fizzle. Yep. Who... And you often talked about constructs and combining machinery with magic and stuff like that. And young Zeph has been collecting spirits while out in the wildlands. I don't know if you, either of you two were around when it actually happened, but he's caught a couple of these spirits hmm. and used corks, minor corks of power to keep them trapped because he was going to bring them back to sell the bone for it. Are corks just everywhere in the world? Or you like... Yeah, like they're, I, they have a cork shop. Yeah, <laughs> Corks is loving that you're asking about corks. <laughs> so he, he brings you down to sit next to him, and he says, "Well, of course, normal corks, <laughs> they're everywhere. <laughs> People use them for bottles and that. But corks of power, very rare. Uh, there isn't like just a cork shop. You might find okay, a magic okay, shop. Okay. That, but there is a monastery not far from here where they make." the rare blue moochie dooch. And I've uh, commissioned these guys to go there in a week. Are we still on for that, lads? And Gunther says, yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I, to give, give uh, Colts the finger guns. So. Yeah. yeah. That was what we were originally hired to do. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah. And then we, and then we took a detour. Yeah. Yeah, a really, is, really long detour. Their detour took them into the wildlands, into the tomb of Huskatel. But yeah, originally they were heading this way to go to this monastery to uh, collect cork, cork the gnome's final piece to complete his corks of power, which is the rare blue moochie douche. The 13th cork of power. (laughs) The 13th cork of power. And now Gunther, you can see his eyes light up too. And he says, yes, I've uh, hired corks to be my uh, court consultant as I complete my own collection. And I too want to employ you guys to bring me back a rare blue moochie. Wait, there's more than one of them? Yeah, it does seem as rare as you would think. But the monastery, the monastery makes them, we're not quite sure of the process. It's a heavily guarded secret that we want you to travel to the monastery and figure out. That sounds right up my alley. And he says, the other big problem, Bone Boy, all the spirits that were in, he kept, they were only minor feral spirits, it wasn't a big deal, all destroyed, spirits gone. Um, are mine still in the jars? Yeah, okay, cool. yeah, you've still got yours. 
And then he says, and Big Juju. And you might remember Big Juju. He was, remember when Corks had to go buy a stronger bottle to hold your spirit? Bone, bone, bone Boy went Bone board. Boy did. Oh, yeah. sorry, yeah, Bone Boy. That's right, yeah. He went to a higher, a man that deals in higher spirits mm. um, called Big Juju, who's like a half giant. That's right. Um, he said his shop got hit hard by the undead. He survived and nothing else was touched except all the spirits were shattered and released. Uh, so he's starting from scratch himself um, and he had some powerful spirits, some that would sell for up to 10,000 gold. So you're saying there might be a premium on captured spirits right now? Captured <laughs> good spirits. <laughs> but even so, I mean, he's got to like start from think. somewhere. Well, I've already got three of them. <laughs> so yeah, something to keep in mind. There's still an operator out there. I mean, um, I was going to keep one of them for myself. But yeah, yeah. yeah, totally. Um, and so, yeah, <clears throat> Gunther says... So you guys have done remarkably well. Way better than I expected, of course. I thought I was going to become famous from your deaths and being the one to send you to your deaths um, because Wildgate hated you and he's like talking to you guys as though you're involved as well. <laughs> he doesn't know who the adventuring party was. He's, <laughs> he's totally just thinks maybe you were the gnome we dealt with and <laughs> Arthur and whatever. Um, and he's like, but the tides have turned, guys. Especially once... Betty the White rose again as Black Betty what? and wiped out half the adventurers in the town. <clears throat> now, everyone's not quite on her side anymore. And they're thinking maybe you guys were right to kill her. <laughs> and also, also from uh, finding the lost tomb of Husker Tull has made you guys... Well, you would be more famous if Wildgate hadn't been attacked by the undead. That was front page stuff. But you guys made the second page with what you've found. Um, it's a dream of most adventurers to un find a thing like this. This is the lost body of the warlord that uh, we fought 300 years ago to claim these lands. A monumental find. And of course, it's, it's going to make me rich to have that too. It's, um, we're going to need to send a more powerful party out there to clear out the frost giants um, which I'll do I'm going to hire those and send them out there immediately so we can and that is going to be your next week adventure by the way you're all going to make out you're all going to make level 10 okay. heroes okay <laughs> yeah for a one shot oh okay yeah. and you've got the option either just to make a more powerful version of your characters if you want to test out a level 10 build you just got to change their name and race or you can come up with your just completely own unique own yeah. adventurer just for this one shot who isn't as important if they live or die <laughs> yeah 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 because it's a very risky thing but whatever the outcome there's a lot of different outcomes that will have a clear impact on the world and impact you guys cool. yeah, yeah, in the yeah. future yeah, cool, cool. so I'll send you more of the details you'll get like six magic items two very rares from that and uh, yeah. you make up and I sort of recommend trying to go for strong powerful yeah, 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 yeah. successful yeah. adventures yeah. yeah yeah and we'll play that out next you put that first full bottle week I already mentioned that to Matt but Matt's <laughs> like he might die I'm like oh I don't know about that <laughs> Yeah, but it should be fun, and then it means that when you're ready to head off the week after, George will be back yeah. and everyone will be on board. Exciting. Yeah, I thought that would be cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he also, Gunther says, and of course, with me being rich, I'm more than happy to pay you the 2,000 gold we agreed on. Um, Is that each? Young Big O, you're <laughs> always the... Uh, <laughs> The negotiator, weren't you, you little gnome? And you're obviously not a little gnome and stuff. He's just mixed you up with someone. He says, no, no, we've got the contract. It's 2,000 gold uh, between you. Um, and yeah, this is something you guys have got to decide. <laughs> <laughs> How much does, do these guys get of anything? They're not on the contract? Their name's not there? 
I need my name after the contract, <laughs> please. Hugh Jackman. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's, so there's going to be 2,000. There's going to be five gold per orc hand, 35 times five. Oh, it was 28. 28 orc hands. Mm -hmm. The retributors give you 160 gold total for the bounties. And you get 100 gold per snow troll part that you collected, if you can remember you were collecting three. three. Yeah. So you get 300 gold for that. And so we've got 140 for the orc hands, 300 for that. Uh, 160 for the retributors, so that's 300 for orc hands and retributors. So that's 600 all up, 600 all up. plus yeah. the 2,000. So 2,600? Yeah. 100 between. What's the economy like right now for reanimating thumbs? Uh, Gunther says, oh, it'll probably pay for you to speak to um, Big Juju. Though it is going to be a problem because there isn't many uh, spirits out there at the moment okay. uh, to infuse. There is an infusing process to create totems. I don't know. Can maybe you buy do one of his thumb? spirits? <laughs> well, hmm? Ben has three spirits. He's got one I've minor got, one, I've right? One and minor and two reds. Yep. Two um, reds. <laughs> two. two I, what are they called? Like angry feral spirits. Feral spirits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which still represent like what happens in the wildlands is this unnatural ice and snow that took over the land seems to also be trap spirits and. Anything that's not ready to pass on has been trapped here for, could be up to centuries. It could have been when the lands were green and had foxes and stuff running around. Or it could be, you know, angry snow troll spirits mm -hmm. still roaming the lands and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and these are what your traps caught. You know your traps couldn't catch snow troll spirits. They're catching these little critters and, um, and things like that, which can still be put into a totem to create a beginner sort of wisp player. Yep. Um, and the idea behind wisp is it's a way adventurers can show off how successful they've been because the wisp dolls get more and more elaborate with artifacts and that they've collected and they learn, they can use traps to capture spirits of powerful creatures they kill and then... So Gunther. Yes. How much are we going to get paid for this next? Well, I've still got to uh, uh, think about that. I'm, I'm quite happy for you to keep all of the items that I've, I've lent you. Um, and you were going to go and do it anyway. Um, I'll talk to Quartz. Figure out how much these Blue Moochie Dooch go for. And I'll buy it off you. What if we wanted payment in the form of a blue moochie dooch? So, ah, uh, yes, Corks told me you were an avid collector yourself. <laughs> well, we're going to have to see. I have no idea how rare these corks are. <laughs> yeah. If there's only two corks in existence, I don't want to sign a contract to say <laughs> I just pay you to get there and then give it to you. Maybe it's like a set, maybe it's like a hundred of them, it's like a yeah. numbered set. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also want to ask, did you get interested in corks after I asked you about them for like a reward for us um, before you sent us, off, sent us off? No, I didn't think anything of it until I ran into corks here and yeah. he told me all about it. And a uh, captivating fellow, many stories, lived a long time as a sailor. And uh, yeah, he's been staying with me ever since. He took a, obviously a big interest in how he bet on you to complete the... Uh, quest and the, there's a small problem with finding the bookies involved because a lot of them are dead <laughs> i feel like we should have played the bet on ourselves now mm -hmm. you know yeah well it only started to happen once you left I, i'm curious who bet against us pretty much everybody, 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 everybody it would have been <laughs> yeah, everybody yeah, in wild yeah. game they all wanted us dead it was sent what on did us you do? <laughs> Uh, you need to go and back and watch Matt's uh, run of Matt's videos. Yeah. It'll explain it better than what we can. Yeah. It was a dark and stormy day. <laughs> Betty the White. Yeah. And now she's Black Betty. She's Wild Black Betty. So, so is Black Betty. <laughs> 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 
Oh, she's she dead Betty. now again, or is she still walking around? She's uh, she jumped on the back with the bone lord on his dragon. <laughs> wow. And, uh, headed off. Oh God. Holding her head in one hand. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's quite a sight. Killed a lot of people as well. A lot of our powerful adventurers went up against the Bone Lord and, well, Bone Boy and Betty the White and this undead dragon. Oh, so Bone Boy's fair. gone with them as well? Well, we think Bone Boy is now the Bone Lord. Oh. He was screaming at the top of his voice that he was finally awakened again and really happy that someone brought him to this piddling goblin body which he over seems to have overtaken. Huh. Yeah. Tell me, we've got business with Betty the White. I'm oh, sure you have. In do fact, we? I mean, how many times do we have to kill her? <laughs> the people. I feel like we killed him too, one too many times already. Like, you know. And uh, yeah, so you're carrying on talking. Um, Gunther fills you in on what's happened with Wildgate. There's a bit of a power vacuum as patrons have fallen, buildings are empty. Um, the existing patrons have armed guards in some of the towers. Um, and he says, whatever you guys need to do, I'll give you the paperwork if you need to. Um, but just be aware, it's a very tense time. Um, there's only two of the most powerful patrons. Next door is Lady Elsa. Um, how Wildgate works is the patrons actually run the town as a council, 14-man council. He says we're down to seven now. Um, and the Guild Assassins is basically their enforcer if things go wrong. It's a very well-run town. Um, no one wants to cross the Retributors, the Guild of Assassins. <laughs> I was about to ask some questions. <laughs> yeah. Are we staying here? Are we staying in the town overnight? Uh, well, Gunther says you're on my adventuring party. Now, I and to be honest, adventuring parties are hard to find these days as most of them got wiped out in Wildgate. Um, so I have rooms here, and there are also a lot of now empty houses that I'm quite happy to commission out if you wanted to live. I have some say in one of those districts. You have a house, a little small stone house in the um, West Housing District. Did they just get it or something? No, you've always, that's where you've lived when you were in Wildgate. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying adventuring parties are quite rare at the moment? They are, oh, they, they are. So that, so that it, deserves it, a premium. It would, it? it would almost mean that you'd almost need a, if you wanted to keep us on retainer, <laughs> you might have to Perhaps. work out some kind of salary or something. Big O is more into the... He's looking at you because... When you first talk to him, you're quite naive and happy in that. And yeah, you've got this edge to you now. <laughs> um, you all have. You come back um, young, you went out young, bright eyed murderers of a beloved, <laughs> beloved lady, and you've come back as hardened veterans. You went out as naive murder hobos <laughs> and came back as hardened murder hobos. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But he says, well, you do have a point, lad, but um, the other point is that. Though the adventuring parties have basically halved, maybe less, so have the patrons. So we're in high demand. <laughs> but I do want to keep you on. You're semi-famous now um, as the finders of this warlord. And you've brought recognition to my name and also, of course... A lot of profit in the future as we excavate this tomb and find out about history. And if we can push further the north, this is a major landmark. Uh, so yeah, I will be generous. Don't, don't you fear, boy. Um, I like your, I like your spirit. You remind me of myself as a young adventurer. Um, uh, can I insight to say, was he a young adventurer? <laughs> Uh, yeah, do was it ever an adventurer? Yeah. I'm real skeptical that he was an adventurer. <laughs> <laughs> you walked down his hallway, mate. You had paintings and stuff. I don't personally doubt as a fine artist. Uh, <laughs> oh no. Uh, right. yeah. Soon, 20. 20. He seems incredibly full of confidence. <laughs> okay. That's, yeah, he's just, from what. 
you know, and Zef, you've you've heard about him. Mm -hmm. um, there, he has many exploits. I mean, it's the, probably the same as Percival Bartleby. How much is true? Maybe probably a lot more true than <laughs> Percival Bartleby. Um, he's made his name. He's he's grown. He's up in the ranks now as one of the top adventuring guilds, basically, which yeah. you've kind of joined, and. Um, he has many contacts, all sorts of young and old adventurers. And in fact, when you guys create your next adventurers, you can, um, if they're older, they might have adventured with Gunther, or they might be, you know... He's legit, basically. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's earned his name, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, you've got a choice. There's rooms here that you can each commandeer. I mean, this is a rich place, isn't it? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, he's done really well. Yeah, and he yeah. shows it off. Um, part of part of his thing is to show his success, basically, mm -hmm. to attract the best adventurers. And yeah. So but, I mean, I would say we can we should stay the night here. Yeah, I mean, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. And he says, and, and what of you, Arthur? And Arthur's just sitting there. <laughs> well, did we just <laughs> pop him up in a chair or something? <laughs> <laughs> Locked in internal rage. Yeah. And big O um, tells the story of what's happened to Arthur. And Gunther says, well, we've got servants. We can look after and keep an eye on. Maybe take a little bit out of your commission just to um, try and figure out what's wrong with them, keep them alive, keep them fed, keep them in a room. And they goes, like, oh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be excellent, man. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll bunk with them and keep an eye on them, eh? I don't touch. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so that's what Big O was going to do. And Gunther says, but boys, you've, you've been in the Wildlands for about a week, basically. It was three and a half days to get there, three and a half days to get back. Um, from what Trimlane, and Trimlane's been sort of just sitting quietly in the corner with an old Thames just been standing there. And, um, and he says, what Trimlane's told me, you've been on the go for every day, you've fought battles, you've had very little rest. So put your feet up for a couple of days and we'll get you out to this uh, monastery on time. Ah, that's easy enough. Um, but yeah, let's figure out what you guys sort of want to do with your downtime here. There's an extent, Gunther has an extensive library if you need to research anything. Do you mind if I just quickly talk to Corks, like pull him aside? Yeah, let's do that first. <laughs> Corks says, yes, what is it, Nibbles? Hey, so Corks, you remember that cork you gave me? The purple one, the, the soul catcher. Ah, yeah, the, um, what was that one called? The, oh, the soul catcher. The soul catcher. Ah, yeah, the soul catcher. Uh, what was the other thing? Oh, to catch your soul if you died. But yeah. There was something else that could do. Ah, the mind shielding. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, the one that uh, protects your mind. Yeah. 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 Um, so, did you know there was a soul inside? Oh, I just lose track of some of those minor corks, boy. Um... <laughs> I sometimes chat to the, some of the spirits in them. Yeah. yeah. Well, it seems to me that I sold the spirit and it needed a very powerful vessel mm -hmm. and, and oh, oh, to, to Bone Boy. And then, to Bone Boy. To Bone Boy. And then we left the next day and now Bone Boy is Bone Lord. <laughs> you can just see he's <laughs> and, sitting there very still. And I think, Corks, that we might be in a lot of trouble here. Not if we don't tell anyone, <laughs> yeah. We're just giving you a heads up. I mean, we're, we'll keep our mouths shut. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see he's paled quite a bit, yeah. and he's like, yeah, let me think on this. Don't tell anyone else. <laughs> don't tell a soul. Heart soul? But no, I won't. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> you know, that, the bone Lord. <laughs> Did you say that to him or to everybody? Just corks. Yeah. Cool. yeah, I would have grabbed him like and yeah. like come up to his yeah. honor where yeah, I yeah. was waist and pulled him aside. Yeah. Is first of the team here? Or? No, he's, Nibbles has got the best hearing in the group, so he knows. I'm quite happy not to know that. <laughs> Just yeah. You were there. Yeah, but I, yeah, but yeah. I didn't I yeah. didn't put it together back Yeah, he, he probably didn't even know he had a soul that he was talking to. He might have, he might have mentioned it and stuff, yeah. but it's a, it's a big leap yeah. to, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, know that you sold a soul to... Uh, yeah, but you see Corks really starting to hit the wine with Gunther. Gunther's talking, but Corks is quite a bit quieter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you guys got a couple of days. You got tonight. 
there's probably not much you can achieve tonight. Um, your servants can show you two rooms. They're nice stone rooms, nice beds, furniture, wardrobes, your own little sections. Um, the servants basically say this can be your room now if you, you know, each of you have your own room and space. Uh, everything's very secure. You can leave stuff here. If you have more secure stuff, we have a, the vault basement down below. Uh, yeah, but when the, the morning comes, uh, just <laughs> in the night, um, I'm wondering if, I don't know what sort of skill check it would be, but I would want to try and shake this beard. You want to <laughs> shave my beard? Well, while you're asleep. While I'm asleep. Yeah. <laughs> It'll just grow back. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. 50% chance it might just keep yeah. growing while you're cutting it. Okay. So what are you going to cut it with? Oh. I have a dagger. Okay, so if he fails, you're going to see this man sneaking into your room <laughs> with a dagger. A man you hardly know. <laughs> you sure you want to do this? <laughs> I'm not sure anymore. I think I might, I might actually uh, sort of just you have your, your, your uh, meeting. wander around town you have your and have a look for a big juju. <laughs> Okay, I'm just looking at my spell list going, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you wander around town, you know it well. Um, it is past when the shops are open, so they're all, they're all closed. You know where Big Juju's shop is, it's basically Bone Boy was here and Big Juju's in a, in a quarter over here. Mm. Um, his shops are all closed up and shut as okay. well. Um, there are people mingling around, you recognise a few people. Um, do I see Big Juju anywhere? You do not. However, you do know where, um, you do also want to near Merak's tower okay. as well. Yep. And that is half destroyed. Right. And the door has been splintered and knocked down, but there's an armed guard standing outside side of it. A dwarf, big dwarf with a big battle axe. And he's, okay. he's, with the, he's sort of like hired by the patrons. There's a sort of small militia there. Okay. Um, can I look around for some sort of guard uniform? Um, that will be very tricky. You do see some guard uniforms, but people are wearing them. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll just be brazen about it then. I'll just um, walk up and ask to see Merrick. And uh, say he's expecting me. Yeah, he takes a look at you and. Uh, Says, oh, Gunther, Gunther told me you guys were back in town. Yeah, you can go straight on. Um, yeah, these guys have been paid to keep out looters and that, but um, the, the patrons have put I'd word like to out. become a looter. <laughs> it's, it's, very, it's very dangerous. Let me tell you. It's multi class, yeah. <laughs> He's already got the road. Yeah, yeah and so he, um, he ushers you in. You can walk straight through the doorway. The door's kicked down. You can see the wooden door still on the ground with lots of claw marks and everything. <clears throat> it's a three-story tower. How big are the claw marks? Um, sort of human size okay. hands that have just been gouging through okay. the door. Yeah. And the bottom floor, you know, is for entertaining guests, for having meetings. That seems quite turned over. Um, you know the second floor is more the, his own personal dining area and the top floor is his room, basically. Right. Yeah. Um, what would you like to do? Uh, I'm here to visit Merrick and let him know about the situation with the giants. Okay. Oh, uh, just... I, I just... I, before I had left, I'll just let the team, rest of the team know that I've gone for a walk. Cool, 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 we've all gone to bed, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just... Yeah. Yeah, they know you're a resident here. Um, also, sorry, the guard, the dwarf guard, does tell you, he says, he's here to guard because Merak was one of the patrons that was killed, disappeared. Oh. And he's like, so, uh, yeah, I'm just... So then who employs him? Uh, he says, I'm with... There's a council of the patrons that... Um, basically hold power of the town. Um, that council's down to seven, and he's, he's been employed just to make sure that no one loots these patrons that have died while this power vacuum gets re-established, reformed. Um, it's right, but he would know that Merak is missing. 
Yeah. But he let me through. Yeah. Yeah, he knows who you are. Okay. Yeah, and he knows that you're not a looter. You're, you work for Merrick. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then I will go to the room mm-hmm. and see if I can look for any clues as to his whereabouts. That's cool. Okay. Give me an investigation check. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, that is a... 18. Oh, that is quite good. Okay, you have a look around. You know, Merak. Yeah, that's going to be enough. Yeah, this is good. So you know Merak is... You know he was in financial trouble. This is why he hired these... These Blackwing Reavers basically paid him a lot of money to pose as an adventuring party so he could give them passage to go into the wildlands. Right. Um, so, and you also know he had certain fa- uh, possessions that he had like a, a bag, a bug out bag basically, where he'd have all of his possessions in case he needed to leave quickly. Um, sometimes he'd run afoul of the wrong person and had to lay low and what have you um, <clears throat> and you also notice that some of his other um, important things um, is a case of documents that he usually has that has all his details in it they're all missing and from your investigation you can ascertain that maybe he used this night um, this situation as a way of perhaps faking his own death so he can um, go leave Wildgate, start anew without running foul of the Assassin's Guild, without having to pay some of these debts that he had accrued. The other interesting thing you find with that 18, as you go through his desk and everything up there, is you see he has been putting together a book where he's been gathering information on Crosid. Crosid, which is the guy that betrayed you and oh, yeah, of he, yeah. took your uh, took you out of it. You don't know why he'd be doing that. Um, but knowing Merrick maybe it's just a way of holding <coughs> some power over you or being able to sell you information at a steep price at some point. Well, I'm definitely taking that book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's found out quite a bit. He's found out that whatever artifact that he uh, stole off you basically mm. um, he used to rise up the ranks of the pirate lord Bowl in the city of Yore and he's become pirate lord Bowl's one of pirate lord Bowl's leading lieutenants he's changed his name to Riven Khan I'll send you this um, this excerpt and the artifact seems to have somehow accelerated his rise in the criminal empire like he's moved quickly um, Murlac's making notes like he shouldn't have um, been promoted this much this quickly um, and he seems to now be a pirate captain on the black ship known as Darkwater and uh, he spends most of his time out at sea now plundering along the coastline and he returns to the city of Yore to resupply and drop off his earnings with Pirate Lord Bowl every month or so and uh, written and scribbled in there is also an address in the city of Yore so there's a lot of good information there. Does it have a list of dates that he has returned to uh, your? It does. Um, he's been noting it down. So you can see that it's a little bit erratic. Sometimes it's a month, sometimes it's two months. At the moment, the last time he was in was about two weeks ago. Okay. Um, and that was near the last entrance that Merlax made. Okay. Um, you get the feeling that he's got someone in your that's um, keeping an eye on things there for him, but there's no name written in here for that. Is there a date for like when the last entry was written? Um, it was basically this uh, when he was last seen in your, which was the two week ago okay. mark. That seems to be the extent of the information he's gathered so far. Okay. Yeah. So basically that means he was alive at least two weeks ago. Um, the Crocid or um, Merak. Yeah, 
you know Murat because you only left like five days ago um, with these Blackwing Reavers um, mm. so yeah you definitely know he was alive then and uh, yeah he's he's just cleared out a lot of stuff in his desk packed it in his uh, quick escape bag and seems to have disappeared but he's left no clues of to where he's gone if he's gone he might he might die, but from what you can tell, you've, you've like, yeah, that's like merit to use this opportunity just to perhaps wipe out these debts that he owes and start afresh somewhere. Okay. Yeah. He couldn't just declare bankruptcy. <laughs> not with the uh, Assassin's Guild. No, <laughs> there's contracts that have to be met, and if they're not, it's pretty severe. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I need to keep that book from the Assassin's Guild. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I need to keep all that information from the from the Assassin's yeah. Guild. Yeah, but you also think to yourself, oh, the Assassin's Guild are very good at finding people as well. But yeah, that seems a bit risky. It seems very risky. I don't exactly want to kill my employer. No, no. But I'm, you also get the feeling you might have just fallen into the lap of a new employer if that's something you want with Gunther as or well. Or two employers. Yeah, one of them's pretending to perhaps be dead. Um, do I find any money? No, he's very, as I said, he's bankrupt and oh, yeah, he's yeah. taken, he's taken with him. Yeah, um, fair enough. But that's another clue too, yeah. He's cleaned himself up of money and everything that he needs to live on. Okay, I will return back to the castle. Good, it was well done. Okay, and then, yeah, the morning, morning comes. Oh, and I want to sneak into the library. Mm-hmm, he is. Well, not sneaking. I want to go to the with library. a dagger. No, no. <laughs> but I wanted to research a uh, particular spell that would have affected m aging me, uh -huh. which is uh, time time savage. It's a level nine spell, so yeah. ideally he's going to try to go. Uh, I guess read or yeah, figure out what's happened to him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is a mysterious past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's actually, yeah, we can say you just start reading deep into the night. Luthius like sees you in there and just brings you some candles and lanterns and stuff and says, you're welcome to all the resources we have. Uh, during we? during oh, the night. Yeah. Oh, Hugh Jackman, sorry. Yeah, yeah so Jackman. during the night, after he has yeah, well read into the night, he wants to go out into town and loot. Okay. okay. It's a possible death sentence, <laughs> you realise. He, he wants to find an inaccessible place to use his cape mm -hmm. and then feather fall off from there, ideally not being seen. <laughs> okay, yeah, we can, we can go through that. Um, we'll do a little bit of what you're recent. How well, I guess, I guess ideally he would want to walk the town and even know, you know, he's not just going to do that. Mm -hmm. I guess he would have to make. Yeah, he would want not want to do a, something risky, but yeah, he's looking for low hanging fruit of opportunity, leveraging his his items that he has. Okay, cool. But he, if he it's would also a sure thing. yeah, but he would also thinking out his routine. He would hide, remove his circlet, mm -hmm. knowing that only a few people know mm -hmm. have seen him as an elderly yeah. individual to try to yeah. Okay, cool. So how long do you want to research for first? Um, late into the night, like okay. into like past the midnight. Okay, so, so probably like I don't know, eight hours. Yeah, well, um, let's also get you to roll an investigation check. There is certain information you're going to find, but I just want to know how long it will <clears> take you. Yeah, yeah. Good in investigation check will uh, unlock stuff quickly, but the rest you can start to unlock over time. An investigation roll of 11. 11. So that's average. Yeah. Um, what's interesting to you is uh, for you guys, you guys won't know this, but I'll just tell J Rod. And your magic school, long way away, looking into far reaching teleportation. You got in touch with another magic school for them to set up the receiving um, teleportation circle at their end. 
you learnt a lot about that magic school because you knew you were going to be the test subject. So you wanted to know a bit about that place and that history. Um, and that's why what you've been hearing these guys dealing with these sort of warlords, you know, frost giants and that, rings a bell, even some of these places, um, because that was the area that the school was in. set in. Okay. The interesting thing about all of that is the school was where they lived was in fertile land, rolling hills, plains people that moved around. Um, this was all the conquered land that when they beat the frost giants, they pushed the snow back and they were living here and the School of Magic was established. Um, they've been contacting your school uh, to using magic as communication to set up these teleportation circles. And everything seemed to be in place. And when you stepped into the circle to teleport, everything flashed, everything went weird. You were this young guy. You just appeared in the snow in your robes, um, aged and bearded. And what you've realised from looking at these books and that and timelines is that you did appear approximately somewhere near where that school was, but that school had long been ruined and covered in snow as the snow had retreated. So not only have you teleported um, 20,000 miles across continents, you've landed in a different time when the school fell. But what's interesting is you're trying to find on your, on your maps where this school yes. is, and none of the current maps have it, but you know approximately where it is. And you starting, as you're starting to read, you're starting to understand that maybe this old school of magic hasn't been discovered in the wildlands. Gotcha. And uh, yeah, with your craving of knowledge and teleportation spells and, and things like that, you're starting to think, is there a treasure trove um, in this long lost yeah. school? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, you estimate with the timelines, because you can see the current timelines and you know what timelines they used to work in, you're about 150 years okay. into the future. And then you start to think that had a lot to do with this time ravaging, this uh, ageing of yourself as well. Not only did you teleport across distance, but pushing you through time at that speed. Cool. Yeah. Um, it's almost like a superficial so, ageing. So that, that magic school is not in this current town, though? No. no. Okay. It's okay. somewhere near where you landed out in the wildlands. Got it. Got it. And what I'm going to do is um, also get you to roll an intelligence check. So make a roll and add your intelligence modifier to it. Sixteen. That's pretty good, actually. This is... Hang on, I've written this down. This is for you to go off your own memory and research as to where the school was. So yeah, you can almost grab one of the maps. There's lots of maps and that lying down and mark it. And a 15 to 20 gives you a pretty sure of the location. So you only need to be like within, you. it's almost like a square kilometre you know that once you're in there, you can start to look around and mm -hmm. search. So you, you know, almost excitedly mark it down on this, this map as um, where a potential school of magic ruins lie. 150 years at least old. And this was the teleportation circle you were supposed to appear in and, and then happily go <clears> back. Probably appeared above it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just 10, <laughs> 10 metres of ice. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, and you also get the feeling that this time ravaging is quite superficial. Like it gave you wrinkles and and greyed your hair and and mottled your skin, but your muscles haven't atrophied, and you because you've always you still kept your agility mm -hmm. and and young man strength and movement. And now, and after that exciting find, you make your way out into the town into yeah. the cool okay. night air. Yeah, uh, I guess it's more of a recon recon mm -hmm. reconnaissance. I kind of 
explain the, the, the mental loops that he's doing, you know, thing here. Yeah. Do I notice him as I come in the door? Let's roll a... Are you going to sneak out? Well, <clears throat> or are you just no. going to pack out to I guess I guess he's okay being seen as, leaving as, as Hugh Jack. Jackman. Yeah. And then he would stealth and hide. Mm-hmm. And, and like, yeah, I guess ideally, like, maybe the lapse in time, lose the tail. Yeah, yeah he would yeah. go through that thought process and, and then remove his circlet. Okay. Let's... It won't be like a noticing. It's just more like, <clears throat> as as by chance, he leaving as you're coming in. So let's both roll a d20. But this would have been very, yeah, you know, I guess 2 a.m. after he did his library. Yeah, and yeah. So he's out for a walk. Yeah, so it could happen. So let's roll a d20 and it will say if either of your numbers is within three of each other, by chance, he's just leaving while you're coming okay. in. That's an interesting way to do it. <laughs> okay. Roll a 19. Yeah. Uh, 15. No. no. So, yeah, we'll say you... Just missed each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you come in a bit earlier than uh, young Hugh Jackman leaves. And, yeah, you, you find it quite invigorating to be out in, in civilization again. Um, and with a lot of knowledge, you feel like a man out of time. Um, just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I can imagine he'd be very, like... <laughs> Uh, dis- disoriented in a sense. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. Processing yeah. thoughts. And yeah, yeah it, it has answered a few things like why the magic school never contacted you via sending spells or anything like that. Um, it's a bit sad in a way to think that your mentor is probably dead. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, every, yeah all of this. Anything stuff. you have, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, you can start to think what your character's motivation is going to be. Do you want to get back to your time? Are you wanting to see this as a step in, you know, your interest in t- time and teleportation and, yeah, just start to think how you're going to process this over the time and uh, what your motivations I, yeah, are. Yeah, <clears throat> I definitely think he would stick around and, and, and spend time targeting that mage, you know, mm-hmm. seeing an opportunity arises for him to, like, go there. Yeah. Be it through... Because to you now, it's an untapped treasure trove yeah, that no yeah. one owns yeah. that could have all sorts of power and artifacts in it. Yeah, so as you make your way along Gunther's castle, the first two points, obviously, that interest you are Lady Elsa's castle next door to his, which looks well patrolled, um, there's lights on in there. Um, but then, kind of interestingly, are the two other castles that have been partially destroyed, ravaged, uh, there was talk that the two patrons in there were overrun and, and dead, and, and being dead means they probably joined the Bone Boy Undead Army um, and marched north no. with them. Um, and that interests you, you do see that some guards have been posted, um, and you kind of wonder, looking at Gunther's place, what could be inside these places as well. Um, it does seem risky, you don't know if there's guards inside, yeah, um, yeah. the layout of the places or anything yet, but you do know that the four most powerful patrons are probably the four richest uh, along here. The next building is the tall, massive, craggy tower. Um, it just looks like more for defence as the first gateway into the wildlands. That's well, that's got guards all over it. Um, yeah, so you take a look at that and you don't see the benefit of, of uh, going into there. And then you're basically onto the main street. Um, this, this here is a housing section, but they're quite humble, small yeah. little houses. The main street, uh, there's bone boys where there's almost a crater um, of flat and rubble. And then there's damaged uh, buildings, shops around it. Um, they look like sort of normal shops, but there are a few that interest you in terms of what could be in them. There is a magic emporium, which uh, is all closed up, but seems to sell magic items. It's things you've got to keep in mind that a magic shop could have quite strong magical protections <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And, and things like that, which you'd be quite aware of, being both a rogue and a, yeah, a wizard. Yeah. Um, no, it sounds like he doesn't really see much much uh, e- easy opportunities. Yeah, it, it looks like 
a town that has been hurt and broken, but uh, the main areas uh, have already been almost kind of locked down by the, the, the patron girl. You can see also over here the Overlook, which is still a thriving tavern, even though half of it's been almost ripped in half, there are still people in there, uh, lights are still on at two in the morning. Um, and what makes the Overlook special is it has a view out into the, the valley and all the way down and it hangs off there a bit. And they seem to have just, hey, we'll just leave it open and people can get as near the edge as they want of this half ripped open cabin. Yeah. How deep is the, how deep is the trench? The trench? Um, you, you can look over the edge. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite hard to see at night, but when you flew over as well in the evening, it just, it seemed endless. By, you couldn't see the bottom. You could just see there's a lot of mist and fog uh, gathered at the bottom from where this cold has just descended from the wild, the wildlands. Yeah. But yeah, you're, I'd say your early reconnaissance, you may be thinking that if you knew the layouts better of these two places yep. and <clears throat> found out how guarded they are, there might be some opportunities there. Um, it might even be worth doing a bit of wandering around Gunther's place to get an idea of scale and, and uh, how places, these places are laid out. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for the night, I just got to go back to bed get some sh a short night's rest. Okay. Can I do a thing? Yes. Um, nothing that dramatic. Um, Zeb's going to go to the Overlook Tavern. During the night, evening? Well, yeah, in the evening, not that late. Um, you get let in easily yeah. with your beard? Yeah, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's, he, he wants a night of debauchery, uh, essentially. Yeah, yeah. so uh, the equivalent of party drugs. Hookers and black gang. <laughs> <laughs> How much money do you want to sort of spend on that? I don't know, 100 gold? Yeah, just put a, a troll in the gold. Yep. 100 gold. Okay, so. Purely for the role playing experience. Yeah. Let's, what, what else is imaginary money for, man? <laughs> let's um, just roll a encounter dice. Roll a d20. Anything higher means you might know, something goes wrong. 15. We are going to... Is it a flight with a hooker? Uh, uh, would, I come, would I come across this stuff at 2 a.m. walking around? <laughs> you get mugged by the <laughs> You finally see a mark. This guy comes up and grabs his touch with the head off. Yeah. yeah. The problem is it's a very well-run town for because the consequences of theft or anything can involve the Assassin's Guild just... Uh, taking care of you. So nothing too bad is going to happen to you. I'll just say though that you you were going to spend a hundred gold. Mm -hmm. um, you start to get carried away, lose a bit of control, lose track of your money and actually over tip hookers and stuff and spend 150 gold. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But th is that the first time for young Z? No. No, oh. he's 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 a um, because he had his 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 teenage adolescent years as basically a kind of one of your um yours petty thieves. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he's well acquainted with the lower the lower classes. Yeah, yeah. But you have a a, a wonderful time. Uh, you know, it's this montage of you in the tavern, drinking with strangers, talking crap, arms yeah. around some weird people you don't even know, and they take you to a uh, side brothel type place, and you've found a lineup of beautiful young ladies, and you've picked one, and then there's this montage scene we won't get into. Black and <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And pick one, and pick another. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, at some point, we'll say, yeah, you. Like, like maybe it's like daylight. 5 a.m. when yeah. it's stumped back yeah. to the castle. Daylight started yeah. to, to rise up as yeah. uh, Zeph stumbles in. Nibbles, would you be doing anything? No, Nibbles just gives a real good sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, yeah, maybe you stick around with corks for a little bit. And yeah, I would have catch up. I would have caught up with corks. And yeah. Then, yeah, just probably had some drinks and then gone to bed. Yeah. I mean, like, 
I think Nibbles still upset about Arthur. Yeah, well, that's the thing, and you check in on him, you see he's been set up in a, in a bed, and uh, out they go sitting next to him and uh, just talking to him, basically. Zeb's upset too, but he does it, he vents it in a different way. Deals yeah. with it in a you should have brought one of those paws for a big up for I mean, I mean, don't be a bit weird, right? Like, if, if he's in the room with Arthur. But what if it? Oh. Like, that'd be awesome. Does that count as voyeurism? The montage scene of you just walking around with Arthur, yeah. carrying him to different pubs. And... <laughs> like, I know he's a bit stiff, but he'll warm up. <laughs> yeah, um, and so, yeah, we eventually make it to morning. Um, you feel awful. Is there a magical way you can um, <laughs> fix yourself up? No. Do you, no. You, can, you can press the decide to make yourself look good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So maybe there's a bit of that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you're still blurry eyed, um, wondering where. Does my, your does my belt of dwarf and kind give me resistance to hangovers? It does to poison, doesn't it? It, it does too. Yeah, yeah. It's an advantage against poison. Yeah, first saving throw. Well, gives that as one of the advantages. I mean, it's a dwarf oh, yeah. thing. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So I have a saving throw? Yeah, let's yeah, yeah. save the trophies of poison. Natural <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, but it's advantage. 16, that's better. So that's oh, uh, 21. I like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we'll say, yeah, so you had nights like this before and felt awful and terrible and you woke up in the morning expecting it um, and you just feel a little bit thirsty and, uh, yeah, you stroke your bed to think about it for a... <laughs> For a moment. Hey, it's good. <laughs> oh, good, it's still here. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, maybe figure out that this, this belt uh, could promote a certain lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so you come skipping in as Nibbles is having breakfast with corks. Uh, and you all eventually make your way in for a hearty breakfast. Mm-hmm. And uh, corks and Gunther basically say, well, well, we'll give you the day to rest and relax and do whatever you you guys want to do in Wildgate and then on the morrow we'll start our trek out to the monastery mm-hmm. and uh, see if we can figure out what that's all so about. So shopping? Is that available? Yeah, right? so everyone can um, figure out how they want to approach the day. It's, yeah. it's open. I would like to collect some gold from the negotiation from the contract somehow. So we had we had contract. I think well, I, yeah. I go to Gunther and be like, "Hey, Gunther, can I? I need some gear. Can you give me a, a stipend or something?" It would be his approach, probably. Okay, so but yeah, we also want to see how you guys approach the situation too. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do... is the party all together? At, you're all like, around the table, like breakfast? yeah, and yeah. everyone's sort of saying what they're going to do for the day. Yeah. You know, they might not be honest or anything, whether they want to go in groups somewhere or whether, you know, you, you might say, oh, let's go. But, uh, yeah, you can have a conversation and figure it, and maybe these guys are sure. feeling a little awkward <laughs> about uh, what they do with this two grand. Um, it's big O and Arthur, you could got to decide what, if you're going to include Arthur in it, or... Is he just going to get a constant payment, maybe, to cover his costs of uh, being kept alive? I mean, we should like it. It, it works out to like four twenty each, so we just give Arthur his four. Well, four thirty three, if you want to get technical. Okay. Nibbles is taking a little bit off the top. Yeah, of just, <laughs> just, just, just split it even. Yeah, man, like... it. so everyone gets four twenty. Um, that, and that's just the stuff we got today. I don't know how much George is, so we just won't count that. That was, yeah, so he's got a separate list of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so everyone gets four twenty, cool. and that includes Arthur, so they can go towards Arthur's expenses. Cool, cool. And then um, anything that George has got in the bag of holding from when we were over there, mm-hmm. he's right. still got, and we can deal with that later. Okay, cool. Yeah. So are you giving these guys four? Yeah, we may as well. Uh, I mean, if you're okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, well, there you go. Very generous. <laughs> okay. I right. mean, hold on. We've only known you for two days. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. I mean, he he helped with the the yeah, boss. Yeah, he was there. That's yeah. fine. Helped. Helped. You helped you. with something. He stood toe to toe against Black Moon. And he can grow a beard overnight, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Apparently, <laughs> speaking of the beard, um, during the breakfast, I'm going to look you directly in the eyes and just grow it longer. <laughs> <laughs> cool. It dips into your soup. <laughs> 
this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> splashes out. Oh wait, I've got a minus one hundred and fifty. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think I had 26 on me before as well. I mean, to be fair, we didn't necessarily know you spent 150. No, no, but I'm. It's imaginary money, dude, I don't care. <laughs> well, it was just imaginary. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you're sitting around the table. Um, Thad, you're kind of pleased that you've been cut into this money and been given 430 yep. gold. Yep. Um, <clears throat> You guys want to discuss how you want to approach the day? What you're going to be doing? Um, I did, yeah, I had a thing, but it's a uh, okay. solo thing. Um, I was going to ask if I could borrow one of your spirits. You want to borrow? Borrow? One? Permanently. Permanently borrow a spirit? Yes. You can buy it off me. Uh, 400 gold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 for 150 gold. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to? Me to tell you what the prices were going to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot more than that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you told me up front. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just wondered if you wanted me yeah. to tell you in secret. Or... Uh, that's all right. You can just. Okay. So the weak, timid, minor spirit yeah. that you got is 10 gold. Yeah. But the feral, raging minor spirits that you got are 100 gold. Okay. Bone Boy would have given you yeah. one of those. And he's going to identify what the spirits are so you don't know what they are yet. He what was I... going to identify them. Yeah. But uh, Big Juju might be able to as well. Yep. Um, yeah. So... I have an identity ritual I can do. Identify? Identify, yeah. Oh, well, I'd let that work to identify what sort of spirits they are. Um, as a ritual, it says. Yeah. As it's a 10 minute ritual, and that doesn't minute. cost a spell. One minute spot, plus so. 10 minutes touch. It does, yeah. doesn't it? Do, do, no, 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 it is a first level spell, but as a ritual, so you don't cast it, so I don't have to use a slot. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to, here you can spend half an hour to identify what these three spirits are. Yep, I've, got, I've got one weak one. Yeah, and yeah two. Do, you ha- you have ident- do you have identify? No, man. Okay. No. I'm, a, I'm, I'm a sorcerer, man. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm, not a, I'm not a book guy. Yeah, so he, that would be interesting. <laughs> you don't know how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because, yeah, this is almost part of this thing that you and Fizzle... Babe, Fizzle Wizzle. Fizzle Wizzle always talked about. Could you give a construct almost life, like a spirit into a construct, is that a thing? Um, Thad here doesn't really know what sits outside the gates of mm. Rulon, you know, mm. the giant constructs that were powered by spirits mm. that attacked the city of Rulon. Um, to him it's always just been a theory, and that was 150 years ago, with magic technology. Now we've got it's, smartphones. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you... Um, gleefully start this ritual, which will say it'll take half an hour just to identify the, the three um, spirits. Now, what I need to do is they are random, so you need to roll a d10, 20 plus a d10, and I'll tell you what the weak I'm, one is. I'm rolling this. Um, you... We'll get, we'll get um, Zeph since he captured this. d20 first. plus d10, 6 and 4. A 10 on the weak spirit is a spirit of an eagle. Oh, the animal spirits there, okay. Yeah, so as I said, this could have been something that once flew the plains when there were um, rolling greens and it hunted and stuff, and either they usually die a violent death where the spirit's not ready to move on, it's been wandering the land, Mm -hmm. and then the snow has uh, trapped it and enraged it. So that's a spirit of an eagle. So what happens if, if you infuse a totem with that spirit, mm. um, when it fights other totems, it actually takes on the stats of an eagle? Gotcha. Right, so it doesn't fly. Um, well, not, it won't be able to fly unless the totem has wings and stuff. Okay. As the, the body that you create, you've got to actually uh, fashion. Hair it, in a sense. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... So the, the first... Yep, the first feral one. That's another 10. Another a giant bat. bat. <laughs> giant bat. Spirit of a giant bat, which is a... Like, an eagle is a critical rating, a uh, challenge rating of zero, yeah. whereas a giant bat is a challenge rating of a quarter. <laughs> so it'll have a better stat block. All right, 
And the last one gonna be is nine. That's a it's, giant it's, it's, badger. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you you now know what these trap spirits are. Um, could be like, are you a bat or a badger? Badger. You're a badger. All right. 95 gold. <laughs> okay. Yep. I will accept that. Go so on. that's... Yeah. What was it? 420 each? 430. Yeah. Yeah. So he hands you over this vial with a slightly magical cork that's been holding this spirit. Right. And that cork's turned red, right? Is, is, it, is that... I thought they were little yeah. jars. Are they corks? I thought they were little traps. I had little spirit jars. Yeah, yeah. But they were held in by the... Cork turned the colour, I believe. Right, okay. Red yeah. on. It's now corks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but these are just very minor corks yeah, yeah. to hold minor spirits. Um, They're not one of the fabled 13 corks. <laughs> wooden cork wouldn't even... Okay. So that's another 95. Oh, Excellent. Uh, that uh, almost uh, makes up for my 100 water. That's right. And you've got a giant bat spirit and... What was the other one? The spirit of an eagle. Yep. Yeah. Which I kind of like, even if it's not strong. Cool. Mm. Yeah. Right. yeah. Do you want to go shopping? Three thirty-nine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I wouldn't go shopping as well. Cool. 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 And oh, and so you guys want to go shopping together? Yeah. Down well. the streets. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Nipples and third. Yeah. yeah. And I'm planning to go shopping as well. So. so you can join them, and I'm not shopping. Are you wanting to? Um, you can do these guys first. I've got to. Okay. Like, I think, yeah. Um, I would also like to see if, um, just in general, walking around, just like um, listening for mention of uh, Winter's Edge. No, that's the thing. Your, the yeah. city. Just any news from there in general. Okay. Um, so where, where are we right now? Except yours on the coast, right? Yeah, yours on the coast. Right. That's where we landed. Yep, yep, and yep. We so, came. yeah. Say this is the coastline here. That's your, yeah. and then um, no. it goes up to here to the, the major city of Rulon where the, yeah. the and king then, lives. And then it keeps going, yeah. Yeah, to Wildgate, Wild yeah. yeah. Got it. And then the Cold Catch Mountains along here is the monastery, and this whole area is plains that sort of the last of the orc nomads mm -hmm. are still grown. So you're looking for news from your yeah yeah just to, just in general see what's going on yeah cool there is a a new paper that is there called the New York Times did it, <laughs> did, it did it make it to uh, awesome yeah so yeah there's quite a bit of um, news there and you can see that the editor is whatever his name was so this is like for you guys um, we went and helped out um, Big O's. Uncle, Uncle, yeah, um, and his yeah. There was a printing press there that was being run by goblins that they basically took over. So we cleared out the goblins, and now he's got a printing press, and now he's making papers. Apparently, yeah, <laughs> and he got sponsored by the duke yeah. as well to to do it. So yeah, there's quite a bit of um, gossip and information. You do remember that he tried to run a newspaper once before, yeah. and then fell on hard times because you're a criminal town, so. He's exposing every criminal, and everyone's like, yeah, but we know we're all criminals. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, people didn't like their secrets shared, and, yeah, he got sort of um, protection money was no longer accepted, so he fell out of the protection. But now he seems to have found this sponsor, Duke, and you still assume it's um, Duke, Mooch, yeah. Duke Mooch, that's uh, helping finance this paper. Um, so yeah, there's talks of uh, movers and shakers, and is there any information in particular that you want to know, like how Pirate Bowl and that? Yeah, any mention of Pirate Lord Bowl or any mention of the Chris King. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, lots of mention of the, the Chris King, uh, no new developments and ever knowing who it is. Um, it's just, they do actually have columns where they um, try... Who is the Chris King? Yeah, yeah. but also <laughs> who's in the Chris King's favour or who yeah. seems to have fallen out with the Chris King and they try to figure out what he did to do that and there's a lot of superstition involved <laughs> and speculation. Um, but yeah, it's a it's an interesting read and yeah, we can we can say you've sort of got your finger partially on the pulse of your pirate ball seems to be thriving and still... Um, actually, it's quite interesting though. You do get the feeling that the paper, it's quite subtle, 
but is almost a bit disparaging of Pirate Lord Pol. Um, like there's a little bit of undermining. It's, it's not outright. It's not um, just real subtle. Yeah. Is this we, the newspaper from York? Yeah. yeah we got oh, it was called the New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> and that's um, being sold with the Wild Gate Gazette as well, which has stories about you guys yeah. in there as to your adventure of what you've done. Because Trimlane's been updating Gunther, and Gunther goes straight to the press and tells everyone what you've been doing as you go. If there's stories on us, can I clip them out? Great. Uh, and then um, find somebody to run the story somewhere. Um, like just fold them up, no message, and just send it off to Pirate Lord Bob. That's almost my idea. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is it? No, no you oh, go. Oh, sorry. No, you go. no, it's slightly different. Yeah. Well, it would be good to work with Zev because he's a runner. Well, okay, well, yeah. well, 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 Zev wants to wants to either write it out in his own words and yeah. send it off to Quince Quigley to print in his paper. It was Quince Quigley. Yeah. Quince Quigley. Yeah. 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 Um, I kind of made a note. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. Oh, yeah, no, we'll, we'll do that together. Okay, cool. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we can say you quickly identify a runner network here in York yeah, cool. where they can run to other towns as well yeah. um, since it used to be your old profession. In fact, you might know some people because um, Tinker Tok used to make this trek to the um, Wildgate to, to sell his clockwork items and stuff like that. If, if we do find that, then probably to make, make, make a letter to, to his dad as well. And, yeah. You know. To Tinker Top? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, you can buy a couple of copies of the newspaper too if you want to send them some of your clippings mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, that's great. So, yeah, we'll say that uh, both Quince Quigley and Tinker Top Loon have, have kept uh, abreast of what you're doing. Uh, Quince Quigley, also a very proud uncle, um, indebted to you guys, will run the stories as well. Um, and we will. <coughs> Get out, so yeah, at some point, Pirate Lord Bowl. And um, no, I deliberately want to send one to Pirate Lord Bowl with no, with nothing else on it as well. Yeah, yeah, just to it's like a statement. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the main person that actually knows what it's all about is the white dragonborn. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, <laughs> send it to him. What was it? Oh, not Blaze, yeah, the other one, the black dragonborn, who is the son, yeah, yeah. 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 And so, yeah, at one point he's, he's reading the newspaper and he sees and he sees your name and recognises the names of Big O and, <laughs> and that. And he's like... <laughs> <laughs> well done, Wayne. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've got three of you wanting to go shopping. Now, both Gom and... Well, Gom knows this city like the back of his hand. Um, so he knows that the, the main shops, unless you guys are after something else in, in particular, which we can just say we can figure out if this town has it, but um, let me just find the shops I've got here. The main shops are the Essential Adventurers Expedition Emporium, which only houses six items that are a must for adventurers, but he has lots of each of these six items. These are like the ring of warmth, rope of climbing, a bag of holding, a luck stone, and a cloak of elven kind. What does a rope of climbing do? It just shoots basically up in the air, and you can uh, just climb straight <laughs> up it without having to secure it. It's a rope! rope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and boots of walking. Don't try to tow anything with it, it won't work. Boots of walking and, and uh, gloves of handling. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to seal those for mine tomorrow. Thank you, Mac. (laughs) (laughs) And there's um, also Ingot's Remarkable Shop of Wonders, which is owned by a powerful gnome wizard um, who is a middling patron as well. And he has a lot of uh, magical items that come and go. So if there's a particular magic item you're after, we just have to do a... Uh, roll to see if it's in store and like it goes by common, uncommon, rare, very rare, and Do I get a bonus if I, have, if I can speak gnomish? <laughs> 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 can you speak gnomish? Yeah. They'd like you, but <laughs> I don't know how much you'd knock a price off. 
And there's also a potion store run by Trupp, who's one of the patrons that managed, minor patrons that managed to survive. It's the orc lady that was going to have you guys collect wild herbs and flowers. Yeah, we never it. did that, did we? we no. no. It's the one side quest no. we missed. Yeah. Well, like, you had to go out of your way a bit. Yeah, for yeah it. there was none kind of like on that way. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bone boy shack that, that's it's gone down. And Juju's new shack. <laughs> there's Juju's new shack, and there is also, well, it's Juju's Juju's house, which is a stone, big stone building, and there is a tattoo parlor that does magical tattoos, but cool. they're quite expensive. Yeah. Um. If like I'll just, I want to see if there's like a, a well, I want to say hat of disguise, but a ring of disguise if possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, any, in any of the shops just to have that on me yeah well but I know they're probably expensive they are considered a uncommon item only yeah but they go for $500 uncommon items and I have got it noted here that Ingot's Remarkable Shop of Wonder does have a hat of disguise okay yep. on it 500 yep. um, and oh there is also a ring of Alter Self for 400 what does that do um i'll have to look it up it's not as versatile as a hat of the skies i think yeah. it only has one look to it sort of like the circlet it's it, no it's like you can i think you can do different things but there's a limit to how high but it's not actually an yeah. illusion it's like shape change oh, it's actually shape yeah and it's it actually worth do more. water breathing and stuff yeah, over yeah, time yeah. Right? and do a kind of wild shape thing as well yeah so you, um, that's I think probably still, better on yeah, I think you still resemble yourself. You don't change race and stuff like that. I'm not sure. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, it alters your appearance. No, that's yeah, right. Like I'm much taller or shorter or something like that. I can just hold off. Um, but other than that, any any mention of any corks? Corks. Yeah. As, as Cork said, there's there's not a market really for it. Yeah. Um, but you you're starting to develop a a circle of cork collectors, and with Gunther and his connections. You'll probably soon uh, yeah. know where a few good corks of power can be found. Yeah. Yep. That's all I wanted, but I'll, I'll still hang out with the other guys while they go shopping. Okay. Um, Thad, is there anything you're looking for in particular? Uh, <clears throat> bracer of flying daggers and studded leather. Okay. Studded leather. Just normal studded leather? Um, well, I guess rare, like, yeah, what do you have? Studded leather is uncommon? Um, well, Just we can like, say that you'll be able to get studded, studded leather. This is an adventuring town, so your basic items and armor and swords and weapons and there's blacksmiths and leather workers and mm-hmm. stuff uh, providing for adventurers. Plus, so. like a studded leather plus one would be considered rare. And it would be harder to get. Yeah, and the rare items go for five thousand gold. Five thousand gold. Yeah. Well, oh. fun fact: studded leather isn't a thing in real life. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, really? yeah. One of my friends gets real mad at him. Uh, real mad, and I always sell studded leather out of that. No, neither, yeah. neither a short sword. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what is? Not like an actual kind of sword. Okay. What would just common studded leather cost then? I think it's like 75 gold. This says 45, so is it 45? Oh, 45, yeah. yeah, yeah. If it's for sale, 45, yeah. totally. You can easily pick up a suit. Have you got, you've got proficiency, oh yeah, you're your rogue, eh? so you've got proficiency with that. I mean, I guess, is there any leather, magical leather available? Just in general? Um, or, or I guess, any anything that's uncommon in leather and would have some type of, yeah. Or do I need to be specific with the... Yeah, I mean, anything like leather armor plus one and that, if it's rare, yeah, yeah. Uh, it'll yeah. still cost like... Yeah, it'll cost a lot. Yeah, gotcha. a thousand gold. Yeah. Does the gnome trade? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mean for other rare items? Yeah, might yeah, have? yeah. Um, we can say it's a possibility. Really? Yeah, yeah. Let's... um. I think I'm just going to get the studded leather for 45 gold. Yeah. Uh, as a definitive. Yeah. Shall we? We can roll to see if there is a um, if they have say studded leather plus one here. Just well, I, I, no, it doesn't. He's there's no. He would be interested in the bracer of um, flying daggers. Okay. What's what's that? It, it's also rare. I believe it's rare. 
Okay, roll a percentage dice. Um, and we'll say if it's under 25%. Oh, no, it's... it's we'll say if, if you get under 10%, it'll be... He'll have it or no. So how do I do it? Ten, I have the... Yeah, so you're going to roll a zero first. No, oh, I rolled a 50. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's like, oh, sorry, I haven't... Uh, haven't seen one of those around for years. Um, I'll keep an eye out though, and can let Gunther know if we come across anything. Cool. Yeah. So the duck forty-five for the studded up leather. Yeah. And no, so what you, do, what you do is you make your level ten character, uh -huh. and you give him a bunch of stuff, and then you make sure he dies somewhere that they can get his stuff. And you know where he dies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he commits suicide in the adventure Separate just food. outside one. <laughs> Go find Thaddeus. And, yeah. and uh, Gom, is there anything you want to oh, um, oh, sorry. Can I shop for components? Like, make sure I have magical components cool. for my... Yeah, so I we don't... can... Well, stock you up for that. Again, in Venturing Town, um, magic shops, herbalists and everything. Yeah. So we can just say... I think it's a component pouch. Well, I have a component pouch, but I, I, guess, I think there's like... Like, well, if I learn a new spell, I need to get yeah. components for it, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. The only thing you've got to keep in mind is some spells, you probably haven't got them yet, cost a fortune to cast. Yeah. And they might require a diamond or something. But at the moment, I we can just say you spend 10 gold and you've got everything you need okay, cool. uh, for your basic spells. I think that's all the... Oh, and I wanted, I guess, just, just I need more daggers. So he, yeah, yeah. If, yeah, I guess... Um, how much your dagger is just for you guys Yeah, it's like, I'll sell mine to you for <laughs> 15. Uh, what's the dagger? Uncommon dagger. So could he get an uncommon dagger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, um, Blacksmith will just sell it for whatever they go for. Yeah, I think... These uncommon magic items are the ones that I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you talking about... A dagger, just a plus one dagger. Oh, okay. Uncommon. Yeah, roll yeah. the dice, and if it's under um, it's like fifty, it's a ten. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah, he does have a Alvin crafted, um, slightly shimmering dagger. It says uncommon goes for five hundred gold, basically. Okay. You okay. can um, do a persuasion check if you want to negotiate a little. Is this with a gnome? Yeah, speaking a gnome to him. Am I with Thaddeus at the moment? Uh, yeah, you can be wandering along and looking uh, over his shoulder. Oh, can I try and convince him as well? To, uh, to give him aid sort of thing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it would give uh, Thaddeus advantage. So, yeah. What am I? Okay, but you won't use my persuasion. Oh, have you, you've got much better. What's your persuasion? I just ordered an 11. Okay. Uh, my persuasion. But I have a plus two on my persuasion, I guess. So. I have plus eight on my persuasion. Oh, is that what you, is that what you're wanting to do? Is yeah, yeah. Use well, your persuasion well, maybe, right here. Maybe Gom can lean in and give us a roll as well, Gom, because yeah, yeah. you might even know the gnome and go, "Come on, that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come yeah, on." Yeah, you're a local. Yeah. <laughs> come on, in Gots. This is a uh, uh, thirteen. Yeah, no, no. Oh, can Nibbles try and do the same? <laughs> <laughs> and then the rabbit. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. No, no. No, we won't. Cause I, I, uh, yeah, I, I let yeah, him because Gorm is a local and knows oh, yeah. him and that. But yeah, he's, on, he's quite bro. unmoved. He's like, these are hard times. Half the town's been destroyed. I've got to rebuild stock. Um, yeah, I can only afford to sell these yeah. at price. No, I'm going to stick to my components. Uh, I'll buy some just cheap daggers for like 10 each. Okay. Instead of leather. Yeah. Um, so that's... We can say you can um, try go for a trade because you've collected a couple of... Um... Yeah, no, I'm going to keep the items I have. Okay. They, they're going to work real well for the long term. Cool. But just keep in mind there is a... Magical dagger here, if you ever need to come back yeah, or anything. Yeah. That'll be later tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> How many guards do you normally put out here? <laughs> Just... <laughs> okay, Gorm, are you looking for anything? Um, I'm looking for a big juju mm -hmm. to see if I can infuse the spirit I bought from you mm -hmm. into Black Mood's thumb. Okay, this is very interesting. Um, are you going to Big Juju at all? I'll take along. Yeah. Okay, so we'll say that 
Um, you've wandered with them, you've helped them shop, you've shown them around. Um, we might say, if you want to go in there first, if, if you'd gone at the same time. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll say, uh, Zef has already gone in, um, and we might come back and, and play you. You'll notice that Zef's already there and he's been talking to Big Juju, but we'll yeah. play that conversation. Um, and you you come in with the thumb, and uh, and 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 Zef and maybe we'll we'll do your conversation first, and then we'll we'll come in with the thumb and get that animated, because that's that's very possible to have with the spirit of a badger, is it? I figured it was the most close to a. Thumb. Does like the badger want to go north as well? <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Is it going to get there faster as a badger than as a thumb? Because I do. <laughs> well, well, these keep me up at night as well. Okay. Cool. Okay. okay. So yeah, you wander past Bone Boy Shack, see it totally obliterated, um, but you know that Big Juju was around there somewhere because um, Bone Boy was going to travel to him, and come back. I think you were I think you followed him there or something. Yeah, yeah. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, so you come to a big juju shack and you see this huge blue half giant who's uh, sweeping up, still sweeping and cleaning the place. And he looks up to you and says, Oh, hi there, young old Janasi. How can I help you? What did you call me? <laughs> young old, I, I don't know what you're going no, for. No, a bit after that. Janasi. Huh. You haven't been called a Janasi before? I haven't really been called anything besides blue. <laughs> uh, but blue is easier. Come yeah. in blue. I'm Janasi. Huh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey. Hi. I'm Zeph. My name is Big Juju. I can see why. Yeah, he tells over you. Seven foot. My friend's called Big O, but it's, it's <laughs> ironic. Yes. No irony here. <laughs> and yeah, you can see he's sweeping up all these broken glasses. That the shelves have been cleared. But interesting enough, enough all the little totem pieces, heads, bodies. Um, and there's even wisp boards and tiles and that have been left mainly intact. And they're sitting out there on display. And he says... All the spirits have gone and been taken. I'm afraid I have nothing if you are looking for spirits. Well, I've got a couple. Oh, um, show them. Yeah, I'll take out the two, just the, the eagle mm. and the, what well, I got, the giant bat. And you can see him pick him up and go, oh, mm. mine. Not mine much, not spirit. much, I know. But, um, oh, but I fear all. this one has some spirit. Yes. I'll give you... 110 gold for the two? I don't want to sell that one. I'm actually looking at getting into the game myself. Ah, mm. to play Wisp? Mm. Well, what you will need, we can infuse them here, but you will need to create a totem. Mm -hmm. I can do the infusing. You will need to purchase a Wisp board and six tiles. Um, and then, yeah, I will attune the wisp board to the totem, and I can show you a thing or two. Does this interest you? Yeah. How do I make a totem? Um, it's very simple. You choose some body parts. Anything can be used. And he shows you a range of heads and, and bodies. Like an action figure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But a lot of them are, there's wooden heads. They're sort of carved, like, as wolves, bears. Some are more abstract shapes. There's bone, one's made out of bone. There's one's made out of slightly shimmering steel. <coughs> um, hang on, I'll just get to the... He's actually like a bit of your concept art, I think, that I wanted to do. Oh. Um, because, yeah, what I'll get you to do is sort of... You can design the totem, basically, and we can just say he's got the head and body. But the, if you use better material, like say bone can add to your um, bone claws can add to the plus hit of your totem okay. stat block, um, and you can actually 
start to give it magical items and stuff that add to its its uh, spirit stat lock. Um, so yeah, the basic wood is more just to make a standard totem yep. without any additional stats. A bone, <coughs> anything made of bone sort of gives you a plus one to hit in certain areas. And the infused steel gives you a plus one to your armor class. Does he have those things? Or, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's kept that quite simple. He actually, um, he can see you looking. He can see you're quite intrigued. And he says, we actually still have, um, and you can see him reach under his shelf and he pulls out a box which he opens and it's a, a blue gem and he says and you can see a rune's been inscribed on it and he says this is some of the things you can aim for and he sort of waves his hand over it and electricity pulses off the the gem like spider legs and it raises and that's its body and its legs and it scuttles slightly <laughs> Totally says, nerding out right now. Yeah. yeah. And he says, <clears throat> you can put a head and weapons on it. Uh, but anything that hits this gets a small jolt of electricity as well and adds electrical damage to its attacks. It's powerful. It's, it's $700. Uh, 700 gold for the body. And he says, but yes, once you make a totem and we infuse it with a spirit, you. Um, as a sort of Dungeons and Dragons on the side technical thing, each day you can spend a spell slot to inf uh, infuse it, bring it to life. Mm. It lasts a day and then it powers down again. Okay. You can use any spell slot, but it actually gives you a familiar for that right, day right, as right. well. Um, and a normal familiar lasts, you know, forever until it dies, but these ones power down each day, so you have to spend a spell slot each day to, to bring it back up. And it won't have the stats of the fighting version of it. It'll have a critter stats, like a normal familiar, because right. mm -hmm. it's just a little thing. Yeah. It's almost like, you know, when Ant-Man fights a thing in the arena, he's mm -hmm. like a fully grown human fighting another fully grown human. Yeah. Um, but yeah, on your shoulder, shoulder it's back to... A critter type stack. Because you, you can actually cast spells through familiars and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, to, yeah. And you can, you can even do touch through, like, touch ones through, so you can send them forward. Yeah, them, yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, so they can be quite versatile little uh, pets as cool. well. Uh, it just means you have to expend a spell slot each morning. Yeah. But you can, like, just do it whenever you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can leave it powered down in your backpack, and when you want to use it, you mm -hmm. power it up. Cool. Mm. Alright, so I can just be like rooting through body parts and looking at the action figures and then he can show up? Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's great. And you have an idea of what you're trying to put together. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah what, we, what we do when we create a totem is we say the body and the legs are sort of one thing. Mm -hmm. um, the arms can be weapons, it might be claws, it might be little swords that they've made, it might be um, two metal marbles that it uses as clubs. Um, everything floats. Yep. So the body is separate from the legs, the arms sort of float and the head, whatever you want the head to be, floats above it yep. and it's all infused with the spirit. Cool. So yeah, you're going through trying to put together accommodations. I'll just give you an idea of price. Mm. Um, if you want some cash, because I won't be using that for a bit. Mm -hmm. If you want, you can use mine and then just pay me back. Yeah, you might want to get the See how much gone. blue gem body. <laughs> the blue gem body is 700 gold. I think, I think that's probably too much of an investment mm. for a novice player at this point. <laughs> no, no, no you, just, you get it, you just steamroll. Just baller it, yeah. just show up for your first match with the most poked out stuff. Yeah. Okay, so the boards first cost, the, your basic board costs you 100 gold. Right. Um, these are infused with magic, um, and Big Juju is explaining how you power up your doll with the spell slot. As you sit down, you slide some tiles over this magical board, it sends energy, this magical energy, your magical energy that it's absorbed into the doll. Um, so you gotta buy the boards, your basic tribal board's 100 gold. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably all you can afford at the moment. There's an elegant bone carved board that actually transfers more power to your totem and stuff like that, which you wanna build up to. There's tiles, you need six tiles. To, to I've got to go now, but okay. Okay. you keep going. Okay, cool. Yeah. What's the time? 7.25. Um, yeah, cool. no, we have to stay over that stuff too. Okay, so I'll send you about making a character too for... Yep. Yeah. Yeah.
Um, and it's 20 gold per wooden tile, mm -hmm. which gives you no benefits other than being a parry totem. Um, bone tiles cost 50 gold, and infused iron costs 100 gold. And what these do is actually send more power to your totem than what the wooden ones do. So when you're fighting other things, uh, other totems, you're playing the wisp board, sending yep. it power, yep. and the more power you can send your totem, the more attacks it actually does each round right. um, versus the other one. So it's a, it's a game where you're trying to send more power into your totem to, to beat it. And the totem parts made out of wood is 10 gold a piece, uh, and made out of bone is 50 gold a piece, and made out of uh, infused iron is 100 gold a piece. Um, so yeah, you probably want to start small and you can swap out and grow. Uh, I, th I, th I think once he's like sort of doing all the math for the thing, he's like, right, okay, so just window shopping today. Because <laughs> <laughs> that'll just clear him out entirely. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so he's not going to actually buy anything this time, but cool. yeah, it's just going to... Yeah, and Big Juju is happily talking to you and as you're um, getting an idea of what you can do and what you can make, um, go on, you walk in. Yeah. And uh, you know Big Juju, not very well, but uh, you know of his store and he gives you a nod as he's talking to Zef and mm -hmm. Zef seems quite in entrenched in what he's doing, so Big Juju turns to you and says, go on, how can I help you? Um, Good to see you alive. Yeah, um, well, I do have a very special request um, and I hope you're not squeamish but I've got this thumb <laughs> See, I'm, I've seen much much worse in my line of work <laughs> yes um, and uh, I also have this badger spirit here mm -hmm. I badger. am wondering if you would be able to infuse the badger spirit into the thumb and give it a couple of modifications like the ability to telepathically communicate. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not quite sure about doing that. I mean, you'll be communicating with the spirit of a badger. Yes. So what sort of... More like visual communication. Visual. Like I can see what they see. The thumb has no eyes. So you want a thumb <laughs> Your thumb from yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so again, yeah, you can also make it familiar. The problem is to um, power it up each day, you need a spell slot. Um, oh, you're an arcane trickster, yeah. so you have spell slots. Yes. You have a certain amount of magical is, power. Is there not a way to just make it a permanent familiar? Um, Trying to think because this is like with a thumb rather than an inanimate object. <laughs> with a brain. How does a badger spirit work? Why does he even have a badger brain to work with? Yeah. He's, um. Yeah, what I'll, I'll say is I'll give you the fine familiar spell. Okay. Because, yeah, you're basically turning this into a familiar. Yeah. With, yeah, your tele telepathic bond. Yeah. And we'll give it the stats of, say, like a, a rat or something like okay. that. Okay. Um, and, yeah, we'll totally give you a animated thumb that you can use as a familiar. Um, we'll say it has some sort of, uh, yeah, maybe we'll give it this... I'm just trying to think how you'd see and stuff with it, though. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you might be able to smell it. No, he hasn't got a nose either. Um, Touch. Yeah, you, you can <laughs> well, only, given that the can only can read Braille. You can only read Braille. Using the um, inanimate <clears throat> objects. Yeah. Well, this is true. They don't have eyes either. Mm. This is a good point. It's something, you know, he's debating with you as he hasn't tried it and he's wondering about the philosophy behind it himself. And... He says, oh, let's just try it. <laughs> give, me the, give me the spirit and we'll see what happens. Okay. And so he takes the jar off you and you can see he's got this um, sort of contraption, of a much bigger jar, which he puts the thumb in. And then he closes the lid on that and there's a hole on the side 
where he puts in the, the other, he uncorks and quickly puts it in, and then he says, let's, let's see if the uh, badger spirit craves life enough to want to inhabit a thumb. <laughs> Which is an interesting thing, because a lot of these spirits have stayed behind because they're not ready to move on. And they are seeking life, which is why they happily infuse totems mm. and, and stuff like that as a chance to live again. And so sure enough, we're going to say you have the thumb starts to move in a badger-like fashion <laughs> around in the jar. And Big Judy says, well, what do you know? It seems to work. Um, the next thing we need to do is... Simply attune yourself to this thumb. Um, sit with me. And he starts to go through the magical process of how you attune to this, this spirit. Yep. It's a sort of almost shamanistic practice that he talks to. And you pick it up, um, being magically inclined. Um, so what we're going to say is you can add the find familiar spell okay. to your spell list. And is that, uh, wow. it's a first level spell. It okay. might not be available. I think an arcane trickster can take a fine familiar because you're allowed one um, non sort of, I can't remember this, the school of spell. But uh, see if you can it's add it. wizard spells. Yeah, it's a, it's a wizard spell. Yeah, okay. You, must, you might have to just hand add it or something. Yeah, you might have to hand add it. Um, and once you learn this principle of how to attune to the thumb, yeah. you can cast this spell, and then, yeah, you you find yourself connected to this thumb. Um, rather large uh, thumb. It's the thumb of a seven footer, seven foot guy. And yeah, and for a second there, as you attune, you sense through it. And you see the world as it sees it, which is, as you say, you're seeing through its spirit eyes. The spirit is, it's not a thumb, it's a spirit within a thumb that's mm. using it as a vessel. Yeah, and a vessel. yeah, you can see almost this, uh, we'll say it's almost monochromic, almost like you're in a fishbowl kind of looking out at the room and everything looks huge, looks up at you. Can it hear? Uh, uh, yeah, we'll give it the same stats as a rat. So yeah, it's aware of the world, as a spirit can hear, you can talk to spirits and, and uh, things like that. So yeah, you, you get the feeling of it turning and regarding you as you look through its eyes. It looks up at you and says, Father, what am I? <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> and yeah, you're attuned to this. Um, we'll give it the stats of a badger. Okay. As a familiar, not a giant badger, yeah. <laughs> but as a as a badger, and it's it's got the, um, you know, the personality. It's a little bit aggressive. It's curious, and and it moves around, and uh, yeah, you can. It's it, it turns it out of the jar and places it, and it inches its way quickly towards you. <laughs> you can. <laughs> 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 and it with your t- <laughs> yeah. Okay. And you uh, have a thumb familiar. Okay. That, uh, yeah, fine. I think this calls for a name change. Gone Three Thumbs. Gone Three Thumbs. <laughs> yep. That's actually a good name. I like it. Yeah, yeah. And Gone Three Thumbs and his new familiar are born. What are you going to call it? Sorry? What are you going to call it? It's Clive. Clive. Clive, Clive the Thumb. It looks like a Clive, <laughs> somehow. Um, anything else you want to do? No, he's just window shopping because he's yeah. like, oh my god, I've got like this <laughs> yeah. much. If only I didn't blow that 150 on hookers. <laughs> no, you don't really <laughs> that at all. How much right. did that cost? Um, we're going to say no charge. Uh, he's just, he's happy to have tried it. It's not like you've bought anything new. Um, it was more for the service and he's happy to pass on the... Uh, Pass on the knowledge. Um, if you want to tip him, he, he would. I be. will tip him because he did a good job. I will tip him fifty gold. He says, "Thank you, young gog. Thank you." And uh, when you find the complete hand, pop back in, and we can uh, see what we can do. Oh, we know where that is. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> it's going to be a very interesting meeting if you ever come across Black Moon again. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to Black Betty, actually. Yeah. Oh, Black Betty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bam, I don't know. Okay, and if we're all happy, we can probably call that there. Cool. I'll send you through the stuff for this one shot. Yep. It's going to be level 10 characters with, I think, six magic items. Two uncommon, two rare, and two very rare. Oh, that's going to be fun. What is very rare? Very, very, so it'll say very rare as a yeah. item. Yeah. Not legendary. We're not going legendary. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be a tough one shot. Um, as I say, there's certain levels that you can achieve that will affect your main character's world. So it'll be quite hard for 100% success. And uh, so don't get too attached to I, I, Yeah, I, 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 I kind of <laughs> hope that they'll die, actually. Yeah. Just... <laughs> oh, you want that extra loot? <laughs> no, no, I just, just it's a one shot, so I don't care. Yeah, so exactly. That's just, kind of, just kind of go um, kamikaze with it. Yeah. Awesome, fellas. And oh, uh, yeah, these guys all level up as well. Do we? Yeah, end of a milestone. Uh, I was going to give you two levels for getting in there and getting out. So that's what you've achieved. Up so we get two five. levels? No. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because you got one level when you arrived in the spider's nest. Oh, right, right. Yep. So yep. we're level five now. That's, level five. Yeah. that's okay. like such a cool level. Yeah, you that's, get third level spells. That's right? third level spells. That's extra proficiency bonus. Um, so, class. <laughs> so yeah, there wasn't much fighting in this one, but there's going to be a lot of fighting in this <laughs> one, so. I'm very happy I've got my thumb. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. You can have a lot of thumb. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of thumb with that. <laughs> right, I'm planning to